This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain, a website or online store, make it with Squarespace. Fifteen time-saving Lightroom tricks that you might not know. Number one, when importing photos into Lightroom from your camera, hold Alt on Windows or Option on Mac and you can uncheck all the video files so that you only have images in your catalogue. Number two, if you're importing a folder from your hard drive, rather than going to import and then having to navigate through all those fiddly drop down menus, simply drag the folder into your Lightroom window. Three, if you're not going to be working on your photos straight away after you import them and you have some temporarily free hard drive space, go to file handling and select one to one for your preview build. This way Lightroom will pre-render all your images at full resolution and it won't be trying to do it on every single new photo as you select them while you're working, which will slow Lightroom down considerably. Number four, the quickest way to fix your white balance is to simply press W and then click something white. If there's nothing white in your image, hit Command Shift U on Mac or Control Shift U on Windows and this will give you an auto white balance. Number five, press V to start a black and white edit of your image. Six, while editing your images, press Shift and Backslash to open a secondary window. This will make it easy to quickly find and select a different photo to edit. It's a lot easier than scrolling through the thumbnails at the bottom of the develop module and you can also filter your search results. Number seven, most people know about hitting backslash to see a before and after of your current edit. But if you go to the history menu, you can right click any history state and select copy history step settings to before. The backslash key will now toggle between your current edit and that history state. This is very useful if you've done local adjustments or change things like exposure or white balance as it allows you to more easily see the effects of the changes you're making. Number eight, when you've created a complex series of settings with your brush, graduated filter or radial filter in your local adjustments, hold Alt or Option while you hover over the edit pin, then drag left or right to increase or decrease the intensity of the whole effect. All your sliders will move proportionally. You can also do this by clicking the triangle in the top right of the effect window, revealing an amount slider that wasn't there before. Number nine, when painting an area with the local adjustment brush, Hold Command on Mac or Control on Windows to immediately switch to auto masking. Number 10, when using the spot removal brush and it doesn't get the clone source quite right first time, press the forward slash key and Lightroom's AI will try again. Number 11, hold the Alt or Option key and click your spot removals as a quick way to delete them. Number 12, if you select multiple images and hold Command on Mac or Control on Windows, the Sync button will change to Auto Sync. Flip this switch on and any changes you make to an image will be applied to all the selected images in real time. Number 13, click the Previous button to apply and edit from the last image you are on to your current image. Number 14, when you go to your Export dialog box, you can save output presets by tweaking your settings and clicking the Add button. Once you have these, you can output your catalogue with multiple presets at the same time. For example, here I have full-size JPEGs, DNG files and smaller compressed JPEGs. This means I can output high and low-res files for a client and DNGs for backup in one single export. Number 15, the key to a speedy workflow in Lightroom is knowing your shortcuts. But there's a lot of shortcuts to know, except there's only one you really need to remember, and that's Command or Control on Windows and forward slash. This one opens a pop-up window with a list of all the shortcuts for the current module you're in. This means that if you ever forget a shortcut or you want to learn new shortcuts to speed up your workflow once you've got used to some, all you need to do is press command or control forward slash and you can immediately see a big list of all the shortcuts available to you. Another great way to save time is to use presets and this is also great for creating a consistent look throughout your catalog. You can make your own presets by getting the settings just how you want them and then clicking this little plus icon here. As many of you know, I make and sell my own film stock emulation presets and I often like to create color profiles that work in conjunction with Lightroom settings for that little bit of extra control. But I want to show you some presets that I'm working on at the moment that purely use Lightroom's native settings. I'm working on this pack purely dedicated to mimicking different infrared looks, but for use on non-infrared images. For example, take a look at these. Now these looks are all created purely within Lightroom. There's no imported color profiles or anything like that. 
One particular feature that has given me a lot of control in this have been the local adjustment tools. They've been updated recently and have become a lot more powerful. Have a play around with all the different masking options in there. Look at the colour and luminance range masks. Learn how to use those a bit. Because the key to becoming faster at anything, Lightroom, photography, surfing, cooking, acting, writing, whatever, is to practice. And there's no more effective way of learning something than actually doing it as much as you can. I know a lot of photographers feel differently about presets. Some love them, some think you shouldn't use them at all. For me, I really like them because they change the way I shoot. I suppose it's maybe my coming from a background in film photography and moving over to digital because it was always that I would choose a film stock and I'd have to think in terms of that particular look when I was shooting. I'd be thinking in sort of high contrast black and white if I was shooting something like HP5 or I'd think not only in terms of colour but the particular colours that you get with something like portrait if I was shooting that. And this is especially relevant with things like infrared films. And I still like to do this when I'm shooting. For example, I shot this image in the woods the other day with my latest Kodak Aerochrome emulation preset in mind. I knew the light coming through the leaves would look interesting with that. And I shot this tree knowing that my 720 nanometer preset would make it look interesting. I find that thinking in this way when I shoot helps me personally, but a lot of people like to shoot and then decide in post how that photo should be edited. And this method is equally as valid, and I often do that sometimes too. And it completely depends on which method works best for you personally. Find your own path on this. Don't let anyone tell you what you should or shouldn't be doing here. But whether you buy packs of presets or you make your own, they can be a great way of saving edit time, and it also helps you to get a consistent look throughout your work. And of course, once you've mastered Lightroom and created a beautiful portfolio of images, you're going to need somewhere to showcase them. And that is where the sponsor of this video comes in, Squarespace. If you want to be a professional photographer, you probably need your own website. And Squarespace are a quick, versatile and easy way of getting that built and online. It's so easy to get something up and looking really good without any knowledge of web design or coding using their simple controls and drag and drop design interface. It's an all-in-one platform, so you don't need to link to a URL you've bought from a different company and have to learn about DNS servers and all of that. You can check all your analytics to see what pages people are looking at most. And this is actually very useful to help understand how to edit down your portfolio. You can try it for free, and if you like it, then you can go to squarespace.com forward slash Jamie Windsor to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. I'll see you next time.